for my freshman seminar, I teach physiology of the marathon, and that class lends itself a lot to some experiential um, learning. Um, and so I always incorporate three or four runs during the semester where we try out different things. Um, we run some trails, we run barefoot, we run with shoes, um, we uh, play a game. And so they learn that um, in playing, you forget about the running. And some of them run much faster or harder than they would have if they knew they were going out for a run. Um, we've used um, different feedback devices that are so prevalent now. Um, so uh, most commonly fitness watches and things will keep track of your heart rate and your pace. And I like to use it to talk about pace um, in particular um, to help students in that class understand the range of physiologic function. And I uh, usually get into talking about the difference between people who complete marathons and people who compete and completers are just, you know, trying to get through and the average finishing time in the U.S. is around four hours for a marathon. Elite marathon runners are running two hours, 15 minutes, and the world record is two hours and three minutes. I said, so think about that for a second. And they start to do that math and they say, that's like a four minute, 44 second mile pace for 26.2 miles. And I said, okay. Uh, what is that like? And we'll pace and say, okay, here's, here's what, you know, the jog is, here's what the average marathon pace is, and just keep ramping it down until they get to that elite marathon pace and see if you can stay with it for any period of time. And, you know, and it's just a real eye opener. The students use that feedback just to um, get an understanding of pace and physiologic function, um, the, the extremes of ability. Um, and so that's one way in which they do it. Um, the other class um, I teach is an exercise physiology class. It's an upper level uh, course. And in that cat class, one of the things that we use in terms of that feedback is um, that we have multiple devices that give you feedback. Your phone, your watch, um, online, you can just type in information and get feedback inst instantly on. And one of the big things in exercise physiology is about energy. And so how much energy does it take to do a particular exercise? How much work does it take? And how much energy then would you need to consume to do that exercise? And in the health world, it's all about the balance of energy intake and energy output in terms of weight gain and weight loss. If you do the math about plus or minus 10 calories a day, so 10 calories, one potato chip difference, if you're in excess of one potato chip a day in your caloric needs, you'll gain about a pound a year. And most people do gain about a pound a year. From age 20 to age 50, 30 pounds is not unreasonable. That's normal. So you go to look at your apps and your watch for your caloric expenditure. And if you take a student out and they carry their phone and they wear one of those watches and they run a mile and they're trying to figure out, you know, how much calories am I burning? And they look back at those two things. Now, a mile might be too short, and you'd see, you know, maybe plus or minus 10 or 20 calories. But if they're doing a five-mile run, it could be a 100-calorie difference. That's a big difference in a day if you're trying to tightly match your caloric intake and your output. And so I use that as a way to say it's really difficult. You I mean, you've got all this great technology and feedback, but it's dependent upon the uh, algorithms, the math, uh, all the factors that go into predicting your energy expenditure. And becoming a more informed consumer and using that technology, I think that um, one way that the students do start using that feedback is start paying attention. So they start paying attention to um, something that they may not have before, like um, they may have uh, used the treadmills in the rec center and just taken at face value what the treadmill said in terms of the calories burned that day. And they're like, oh great, I burned 500 calories today. And, um, uh, and now they're looking at that going, well, did I? You know, how accurate is that treadmill? And they may, they may now take their phone, their Fitbit, and the treadmill and have them all at the same time and start making those comparisons. Like they start doing that on their own.